In this uh, session, let's consider one example for a dashboard. Let's create one dashboard end to end. Right? So, for that, I'll be uh, using that Superstore uh, example that is being packaged along with Tableau. So, what we'll do is we'll connect to an Excel file which is the sample Superstore. All right. Okay, so this is that data file. I'm coming here. Now, the objective that has been given to me here is to find which of the items, right? There are different items here. We have category, we have subcategory, and we have products. So, which of the product names, right? Instead of items, let me call it as product names. Which of the product names are least profitable for me? The management wants to identify which of the items are least profitable so that they can eliminate them from their, from their product offerings. Right? Now, Okay, so let's start with this. But at the same time, as a part of your event dig out, okay, let's say there are some items which came out to be least profitable. Right? But, I really wanted to see, was, was it like they were least profitable always? So, or right from when they were making losses? And are they, are they least profitable almost in every geography or are they making profit somewhere? So that the planning can be much more informative. Right? I am identifying, yes, they are least profitable. But is it that they have been consistently least profitable? Or... Only for some periods they were profitable and some periods they were not. And similarly geography. So, I really wanted to come out with this kind of an analysis where I can help the management to guide them. One, giving them the least profitable items. But along with that, before they make their decision, they can really dig through the data and uh, identify when they were all making losses, where they were all making losses, so that they can take a very planned action accordingly. So here, I wanted to start with, I wanted four kind of worksheets or visualizations. One, I wanted to build the profit by subcategory. So, I really wanted to see which subcategories are profitable and which of them are not. And then, I wanted to see the profits by item, probably within each of the subcategories. But I wanted to see the profit by items. And probably, if required, I can take, let's see how we handle that. And then, I really wanted to see profits by geography so that I can identify where all they are unprofitable and I could also see the profits by time, over time. So, let's say I wanted these four kind of visualization so that uh, based on these, I can create a dashboard and try to make it more and more interactive. So, let's say initially, let me build these four worksheets. So, I call this write profit by subcategory. Then I'm having another uh, worksheet which will say profit by item. 
and I have one more where I say geographic profits and finally I can say profit timeline some names okay so these are the four charts so let's come to the first one so I really wanted the profit by subcategory so all I can do is the subcategory right I can very well pull all the subcategories let's say onto the rows so this is a list of all my subcategories right from accessories appliances art binders etc and uh, based on these subcategories I am looking at their profits okay so these are the profits that came up for different kinds of subcategories and if possible I can arrange them in a descending order so I'll click it here so the copiers are the most profitable stuff right the phones accessories come the next and finally the tables are the least profitable the bookcases next are the least profitable supplies are also making a loss whereas all others are making some kind of a profit now I can very well look at a quick filter kind of stuff as well let's say the same subcategory if I add it to the filter uh, or probably I can look at category wise right I'll look at uh, category wise I'll add the category to the filter if I want to look out exclusively for uh, office for uh, furniture I can look at it or office supplies alone I can look at it so let's say I do it only for furniture yes furniture as a category chairs and furnishings are very much uh, profitable whereas uh, bookcases and tables are not making any kind of a profit so I can really have right now I may keep all of them but might be I, it can help me in terms of filtering the stuff wherever required <laughs> so one way is I can keep it in this category like this right or I can keep it as a quick filter rather than this I can say show quick filter so that depending on what I am selecting here if I am selecting furniture I get only for furniture if I get office supplies alone I get only for office supplies and if I am selecting all I get for all so I can have it like a quick filter here right and let's say this is the graph that I wanted to keep <coughs> and this quick filter also either I have it in this way or I can have different kinds of mechanisms right now it is like a multiple values list or I can have it as any of this so single value list single value drop down so any of these things I can really have so right now let me uh, have it in this format if required I'll change it at a later point in time so let's say this is what I am creating so simple thing that I got tables are least profitable bookcases and supplies are next in the list now I will go to the next one profit by item now I will uh, add the items which are the products let me uh, rename to avoid confusion profit by product now within that table there are so many products so I really wanted to see which product so I am dragging the product I name I am dragging the product name here there are so many ok so I can say add all the members there is a big list right and uh, probably I can very well uh, go with the profit I'll get the product name I'll get the profit so the some of them are very much profitable some of them are loss making now if required I can limit it to the top 10 least profitable which means the lowest 
values. So I can arrange it in an ascending order. So when I am arranging it in an ascending order, oh, these many items are very much loss making. These many uh, products are loss making. But what I can very well uh, think of is probably I can still keep the top 10 because these are across all the products, across all the subcategories. But I may be interested only within a particular subcategory. Right? I really wanted to see only within a particular subcategory. So uh, it may not be a big deal even if I keep top 10 or top 20 kind of items. So let's say I will identify top 10 or top 20 kind of items. So which means the product I can drag it to the filter. In that I will go with top. Right? And uh, here I will say by field and uh, instead of top I will select bottom. Instead of 10 let us say let us select 15 and by the profit, the sum of the profit. I say apply, I get only 15 elements which are least profitable. So it is saying all these QB by all the sub. So these are the items that are the 15 least possible uh, profitable item 7 8 9 10 yeah i got this 15 least profitable items all right then i wanted for each of these for each of these i really wanted to look at a filled map right the filled map for me is based on the profit so i'll uh, take a filled map here right all I can uh, very well uh, do is double click on the state once I double click it I get a sheet uh, a state out here right once I double click it I am getting a state out here and corresponding uh, to this state well, let's say the profit I drop it onto the color So, <coughs> I can double click it, get a bigger view. So, this is what has happened to the states. So, some states were making losses, right? I can reduce it. Yeah, I can leave it at this level. Some states were making losses. Yes, the one which is showing in uh, red. Minus 25,000 is the loss for Texas. Minus 3,000 for Arizona. Very slight profits are slight losses and greens are the highly profitable one. California is making around 76,000 profit. New York around 74,000 profit. So the dark greens are highly profitable. The lighter greens, Washington is making the, the, the least uh, or uh, moderate kind of a profit. So I could clearly uh, see different kinds of states making different kinds of profits altogether. Right? Some of them are uh, making prop positive, some of them are making negative, but that's the kind of profit each one of them is generating. So we'll we'll try to use this map again. So this is uh, one more dimension that I can really look at. But all of them I have to drive. Okay, based on the subcategory that I have chosen, I want the, the worst 15 products in that particular subcategory, right? Based on one or more subcategories that I choose, there should be an action that uh, with one or more uh, of, uh, or the worst 15, worst 15 uh, products should come from those subcategories. And there, when I click on one or more products, it should show happen that in which geography they are profitable and in which geography they are loss making. I should get that information. And along with that, even I should get a timeline. Right? I should get a, a timeline for each of the quarters. So the date, 
the order date is something i will uh, simply drag onto my caller so instead of uh, year let's say i'll go with the quarter and i will uh, look at the profit the same profit i'll drag it here so i'll not look at year so i'm dragging back only the quarter so oh, i don't want the quarters like this so i want both quarter and the year so i'm taking it more like this so this is for the whole but when i filter it per item it has to come for that selected item only so if required i can reduce So uh, let me uh, make it uh, somewhere in this zone. Okay. So this is this is the graph, and uh, I can very well uh, put in the labels. i can show the mark labels so which are talking about the profits that are being generated over each of the quarters now these are the four things four different graphs that i have generated right for each of the period uh, so time based subcategory wise then i have looked at uh, the the item wise and finally i have also looked at the geography wise right now using these four let's create a dashboard now now the four views which are required for us are being created now i want to create one dashboard using all these four of them i want to package all four of them together and i arrange them so that the interactivity between them can be very much enabled so i'll create a new dashboard so i'm clicking on this so all my four sheets which i've created earlier they are coming out here then i'll add all four of them so initially i have the profit by sub category then i am adding profit by product then i am adding the geography wise profits a double click then i am adding the profit timeline so all four of them and if required i can give a title to this right so i am using the text and using this uh, text okay first let me adjust this stuff if i am dragging the test text out here yes i can very well uh, uh, i can very well give the heading probably i'll uh, call this as profitability analysis right profitability analysis some such kind of a heading i really wanted to give all right so when i put it i am getting something like this which i can very well play around in terms of shaping it so i have got a heading called profitability analysis where i got and if required i can even do this okay so right now it is uh, showing me profit by sub category that's the name of the sheet and if required i can give something more to it as well right so select one or more sub categories so i can very well say now you can select one or more sub categories 
So probably let me go with a very small font without a bold. If required, let me change the name of the font. Okay, select one or more subcategories. I say apply. So I am getting some better mechanism. Select one or more subcategories based on which I should get here. Then similarly uh, here also I can do the same kind of analysis. So I double click this. Instead of the sheet name, I can also say select one or more one product. I'll not give more. Select a product to get its profitability geography wise and over time. So some kind of a message that I wanted to give. So again I can use an aerial with uh, let's say 9 or some kind of a size. So I can say apply so it gets selected product to get its profitability geography wise and over time. So I am getting some such kind of text kind of stuff. Right and uh, so the ones that are at the bottom are giving me geographic profits and etc. Now one thing that I can do on all these is I click here and I say fit. Fit instead of normal entire view. Okay so there is a kind of a full fitment without any wastage of the space and all they are doing a full fitment of the location. Here also for the geography when I say okay here I don't have that kind of a fit and uh, when, I, when I look at this uh, profit timeline I can do the fitting it is already an entire view. Okay so these are the four to start with. So now every object right and the containers on, uh, so they all have a border and several key controls when we are selecting when I am clicking it here. So this will tell me to move. I can move this sheet wherever I require. So this is a kind of this is helping me to move and this is having a few set of options. I can put a title if I want I will show the title or not. I can put a caption. If I want I can show the caption or I can remove it. Then there are some quick filters. I can do the filtering by either category right uh, which uh, we have already done here or I can do it by subcategory. So any of these can be created as a filter or I can even do based on the profit. The filtering can be done based on the profit. Similarly on each one of them and it also says any one of them can be used as a filter also. Right. So all these kinds of things are there which are if I say this you can remove it from the dashboard. The same logic for almost all kinds of charts you could see. Right here also the quick filter I can do either uh, product name or the sum of the profit. So they could be quick filters like that in geography also if I see there is a title, there is a caption, there are legends. Right the color legend is something which we are showing. Right the color legend is, is coming from the profitability. So the profitability is what is uh, showing the color legend. So it is being checked. If I remove it, the color legend will go off. Then I can use quick filter. I can use a latitude as a filter, longitude as a filter, state as a filter or even profit as a filter. Now you could see different kinds of things that can very well be worked out with that dashboard. Now, all the legends that we had like in the profit by subcategory, we have created this, uh, uh, we have created this filter and that is directly shown here. Right, so there is an automatic addition of all the filters, parameters, whatever we have created. Here also we have created a legend color wise. We wanted uh, each state to be filled and that has taken care of here. So these are all added. But 
by default they are added here to the right right now this is where i can think of moving them wherever i require rather than they being applied to the right i can think of moving them wherever i want so basically it's like okay if i look at this if i look at this filter right now i instead of keeping it as it is i can make it floating so then it is not a fixed position and once it is floating i can take it wherever i want so let's say i want to take it into this profit by sub category and rather than uh, having it like this i can really make it into a kind of a drop down as well right instead of uh, keeping it like this i can think of making it where is it okay let me uh, take it here so instead of keeping it as it is in the floating i can uh, very well make it like a single value drop down so that it occupies a much lesser space and probably if required i'll paste it somewhere here right so it looks something like this so i can say all or probably if required let me test it out if i am taking only furniture it's coming like this if i am taking only office supplies it's coming like this if i am selecting only technology it's coming like this if i am selecting all it is coming like this so this filter is working for us so i can say category uh, in this manner the same logic i can apply for the profit i don't want the profit somewhere here i want to uh, drag it in the same way make it first floating right select this uh, flop profit in this drop down make it floating so that i can drag it by catching hold of this grip wherever i require i can keep it on the top i can keep it on the bottom depending on the space availability i can really work it out right here because i have the increase of oh, one increase also is okay yeah this is looking much better okay so now i'm showing the profit somewhere at the bottom now the whole sheet is looking like occupied i've shown a profits at the bottom so i have made so that the whole uh, the, uh, instead of keeping all the legends to somewhere at the right by default i have more them wherever they are worth moving right then sometimes if i want i can add a new filters and all that stuff also but these are the ones that we have created as a part of the view now now this uh, category related filter it is uh, applied to the profit by sub category sheet but if i really want i can i can very well apply it even across as well click on this so i can say apply it to this worksheets so right now it is applied only to this but if i want i can apply it to all the worksheets or a selected worksheets also when i say selected worksheets i can very well select to which of the worksheets that this particular filter can directly be applied to even that kind of a mechanism i can very well do and uh what i can very well uh, do is now if required okay if uh, it is only one single fine otherwise i can even put it as multiple value kind of a drop down as well right if i have to allow the person to select at least two also within the drop down i'll get this kind of stuff so that i can still allow the person to select one or more kind of stuff so that i'm not losing out on the functionality still so i can put it as a multiple value drop down 
and I'm uh, making every each of these sheets to come out with the full pigment which is for the entire view right now now the story is ready I have to create action now if someone selects this right if someone selects this from this selection I want this to be triggered and from this trigger whatever I select I want these things to be triggered so these are the ones that we are driving them as action right on the dashboard if something is being done right on the dashboard if something is being done I want the action to be followed accordingly so those are the ones that we are calling as actions right so when I select uh, one single subcategory again it has to tell me uh, what are the unprofitable items in that subcategory and based on those product which I select it should tell me what are the geographies and uh, uh, where it is unprofitable so that kind of a story is what I am more interested in now before that probably you can look at making it visible in a sheet right the whole thing again the intention is I should be able to see it in a single view all right now let's do the actions one by one so let's first connect the first set of actions from here to here so all these actions can come from this dashboard I am uh, saying go to actions now there are different kinds of actions right when I am saying add action there are three types of actions that are there one it is showing filter action, highlight action, URL action. Okay. Filter, highlight, and URL. So these are the three default kind of actions that are supported, supported by Tableau. So filter actions, they are like based on whatever you have selected. So they are always, uh, first let's do the filter action and then let's try to understand it. Right, I do a filter action. So it is primarily like, I want, I am giving a filter request. So probably let me uh, call this uh, filter action. So subcategory filter. So I want to create a filter based on the subcategory. What is that I want to see? Based on what I select on my profit by subcategory sheet, based on what I select on subcategory sheet, I want a corresponding action to be taken, the filtering action, whatever I have selected on the subcategory sheet. I want a corresponding filter to be applied on the profit by product sheet. Right? So that is what it means. So whatever the action that, uh, whatever the selection that I have done on the source sheet. Right? So one or more dimensional values, the plots that are there on the primary, on that uh, profit by subcategory sheet is a dimension so whatever the dimension values that are there on that uh, source sheet they will go as a filter for the target sheet so which means out of all the products instead of all the products whatever the product that I have selected that will go as a filter to the next sheet which is the profit by product sheet right and so it is directly going as the filter so I am giving the name of the filter 
then I am seeing what is my source sheet and the target sheet. Then I have to specify what is the action that triggers the filter. So when I select it, when I select on any of the subcategory items, then it should, then it should do a, uh, then it should do a trigger, right? If I click on this, it says that I can select only one item, but if I don't select it, then multiple items can very well be selected. Then I have to choose clearing the selection. If I, if I remove my selection, what should do? It should show all the values. One way I can say it can show all the values or the second way I can say is exclude all the values. Now I can decide whatever it is. So let's say if I want to show all the values and I can do this and I can simply say okay. Right, so I'm specifying profit by subcategory is the source sheet. Profit by product is the target sheet. I'm selecting select and I'm saying show all values once you have deselected the stuff. Right now, what is that you have done here? We have created an action. When you select one or more items in this uh, profit by subcategory view, now whatever you have selected, that items they go as a filter in the next sheet, which is the profit by product kind of a sheet. So that is what is going to happen. Now, I'll get a filtered 15 here. That is one thing we have to see and convey, convey in case whether our action is working or not. Now, let me say, okay. So, just to understand it, let's say I want to select paper. Okay. So, when I have selected the paper, Nothing has, no, I can't select the subcategory. Okay, now that I have selected this subcategory, okay, let me just check the others. Okay, so basically here there were no loss making stuff, right? In chairs, there was one loss making stuff. Whereas uh, here in furnishing, there is nothing loss making. For envelopes, there is nothing. For art, there is nothing. For labels, nothing. Whereas in machines, there were five machines that were making a loss. Right? And in case of bookcases, there is one that is making a loss. In case of tables, there are so many tables that are making a loss. Right? So that is what is coming out. Now, when you selected one single item, you are not getting all the 15 items here. You are getting only a subset of that. Because if you have selected the table, you have got only 6 items. Right? Because the, the, the top 15 or the worst bottom 15, whatever you have selected, it is evaluated at the same time as the action filter. So, these two are getting evaluated at the same time. So, out of those initial 15 that were selected, it is showing 6 of them which belong to the category tables. But I want to see all 15 elements that belong to the category of tables. Now, that is where I can bring in a context filter. What is that I need to do for that? I go to the dashboard, I go to the actions, now I am adding one more filter, right, or probably uh, first I need the context filter, so which are more like a special kind of filters, so they are applied before any other filter, those are the context filters, in Tableau, when we say something as the context filter, those are the ones that are applied before any other filter. So, other filters are typically applied within the context of the context filters. So, basically, 
these context filters they are used to create some kind of temporary tables right they create a kind of temporary tables of the subset of the data which is resulting from the context filters and then the next set of queries are run against that temporary table so this is the case so which means i can go to this particular i can go to this uh, particular uh, sheet which is having the profit by products kind of a sheet because this is where i need to take care of so i can go to this uh, profit by products kind of a sheet and i can add the category here right or probably uh, yeah i can add the category here to the filter so now i add that uh, category also here and click on the drop down and i say add to the context so it becomes gray color the same logic i'll do with the action filter also saying add to the context so in this case what happens is these two they are simply added to the context right and they are executed first and all other items are typically executed within the context of this particular so you could clearly see now when i come here See what I can uh, very well uh, do is the action subcategory that was there. I'll add it to the context, and when I do it, okay, I come here, I select copy as. Now what happens is first this sub query will be performed, so, right? So if I select on tables, I'll get all the tables which were typically loss making. all the tables that were loss making the worst is what i am going to get similarly in the book cases this in the art section okay everything is profitable so i am getting the profits right from the beginning till the last if i am looking at the chairs yes there are some set of chairs which are loss making so all of them are being shown with negative values there are 15 types of chairs that are loss making when i look at the paper yes they are all profit making itself in case of storage again there are some loss making kind of problem so we are getting or if i am selecting both the tables as well as chairs i am getting all kinds of tables only because all the chairs the tables are loss making but if i am selecting let's say chairs as well as tables right so because i can select multiple items i am able to select all of them and accordingly the profit by products is getting updated so that is how i apply a context filter especially if i want that to be first executed that particular filter to be first executed and based on that particular filter let's say i want let's say i want the other products to be selected right then so basically instead of all here let's say the person has selected furniture and out of that furniture i have selected furnishings so all those which were loss making in the furnishings are being selected out here so that's how we can very well play around with the context filter now 
the next action that I want to link is whatever is being selected here. Let's say I am selecting this particular product. I really want to see in which. So what is its profitability geography wise and time wise. So that is where I am bringing in another filter or another kind of an action. So I am adding another filter kind of an action this time. Profit by product is my source. Geographic profit and profit timeline, both of them are my targets. When I select, otherwise I want to show all the values. So I simply put a simple filter here. And I say, okay, now you see whatever we are selecting. Wow. So if I selected this, it is making a loss. It is sold only in this particular table is sold only in Texas and it's making a loss of minus 78. And you could see that uh, the profitability is in 2013 Q2 it had a loss and 2014 Q2 it has a loss. And in the meanwhile, and after that in the middle, it did not create any kind of a loss. Look at the table. Now, let's say I want to talk about uh, Chrome Craft Bull Nose o table. Wow, it's not that it is creating a profit or a loss always. Right, there were some places, this particular in Michigan, this product is profitable. Whereas uh, North Carolina, it was creating a big loss. Right, so uh, and if even if I look at timeline wise, it is profitable at least in uh, one odd, odd period, right? And here also this timeline, I can very well do the fitting. Okay. It is fitting for the entire view, but because of the profitability issue, it is uh, not uh, showing up properly. Okay. Now the same logic if I'm uh, going for, let's say within the copiers, okay, I'm saying that this particular copier is profitable. So is it profitable everywhere? Yes, it is profitable everywhere. Whereas this particular copier, yes, even this is profitable everywhere. Right, so again, we have different kinds of uh, copiers which are profitable over time. We can really play around with the stuff. Now in the appliances, this is what is the story. So I select, let's say one of this appliance or oh, there is some profitability as well as some loss. This particular appliance is losing heavily in Texas, but it has gained heavily in California. So we get a slightly decent picture. We can communicate much better. Different kinds of actions where I'm selecting a different set of categories, different uh, set of subcategories, different products, and I'm getting a message that needs to be conveyed, right? Uh, uh, so we are able to tell the entire set of objectives, create a story, and that is what we are able to communicate to our crowd. But this particular table also, this particular Depending on the values, I really want it to be more and more dynamically showing. Right? So these axes and all. Earlier, I have frozen this by keeping it like this. So the axis and everything will be frozen. But if I take it out, it becomes more and more dynamic. Now my chart looks more and more better. It, it communicates a decent picture now. Now I go over here. I see that, okay, this particular product, yes, no, overall there is a loss. But somewhere in 2014 Q3, it created a profit. And uh, it is profitable in California. It is decently profitable, moderately profitable in North Carolina. But probably Texas is a market where it is making a bigger loss. So that's a kind of a detailed dig out that I can give by creating a kind of a dashboard like this.
right so i can give this kind of uh, filter related actions and i can very well communicate a much better story similar like this like the filter kind of actions i also have highlight actions so they are not filtering the target but they cause the marks that are defined to be highlighted now let's create one highlight action right let's go to the dashboard i say action i create one highlight action again the same depending on right i create with depending on the product or depending on uh, the geographic uh, uh, depending on the profit by products that i am selecting right depending on the profit by product that i am selecting i want i want some particular fields to be highlighted now any of they are all going as a filters okay i want uh, the geographic uh, profits are probably that particular profit timeline to be highlighted here it really doesn't work so based on whatever i am selecting in profit by product that particular element in the profit timeline need to be highlighted it doesn't get i mean that's the only line that is being shown there is nothing like highlighting there right so depending on what i am selecting here so uh, this is the only line that is getting uh, select at, uh, that is getting displayed here so there is nothing much to work out on this line now i select this so whatever is uh, the present that is like highlighted accordingly so we can create a highlight action more in that same line right in uh, so uh, based on what i am selecting all the elements of the corresponding should be highlighted something like this okay let me try let me try the editing that action right let's say i wanted this uh, highlighter one let me edit it instead of going for profit by timeline so here let's go with profit by subcategory and here let me go with profit by product so whatever i am selecting here i say in this profit by products it has to be right uh, i can say either uh, the sub category need to be highlighted or all the fields so let's say the sub category will be highlighted with the select and i say okay so now what you could see is based on what i am selecting the whole sub category field is highlighted right the highlight color is more of this kind of a color so when i click on this now the corresponding graph would be created country wise uh, geography wise and a profit timeline wise then the third set of uh, action that i can create is a url action so it dynamically generates a url based on the action that i am performing and that action will be opened within a web object in the dashboard or probably it's like a, a new browser if i have so it opens in a new browser window and i can trigger that kind of an action now let's say i am creating another action right i am creating a url action this time so wherein i am clicking let's say profit by sub category and uh, let's say based on this i want the url to be created based on that filter values or based on the sub category so based on the sub category i want the url to be created so if i have to test the link now i could see that 
Okay, there is a web page that is created. So I need to have the process in place. So if I click on this select URL encode the data values and I say allow the multiple values and I say OK. So what it means is when I click here, there is a URL that is created called binders. Actually, uh, we need to have uh, the connection and all accordingly. Right, uh, but I mean, this is a typical uh, procedure where I can connect to an URL and get this entire thing published. So if I'm not interested in having this particular action, I can very well remove it as well. Right, I, if I don't want this particular action, I can very well remove it. So which one did I remove? Oh, hi, uh, highlighter is there, filter is there, so the URL action is what I have clipped. So this is the way we can really work around with our dashboards to make them more and more uh, user friendly, to really uh, be able to play around with them, create uh, different kinds of visualizations and uh, uh, create some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, decision making capacity to the management by presenting them in a much effective manner. Alright. So that's how you have to go ahead creating the dashboards for based on your data. Thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.